morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folare with Asukwa James. Good morning, good morning, Nigerians. Indeed. Um, uh, today, you know, sort of coronavirus, COVID-19, still on that, uh, we'll be looking at um, a bit of legislation that has been causing something of a stir. Um, in the first place, you probably know I'm already talking about a bill sponsored by the um, Speaker of the House of Representatives, Honorable Bajabi Amila. And um, it's, um, Azuko, what's its proper name, the bill? The bill should be, I, I think it's Control of Infectious Disease Bill or so. Control so of Infectious, infectious Diseases, Diseases bill. bill. Maybe it had some pieces after it, mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter. That's the gist of the matter. Exactly. You know, um, you know, and, you know, the... House of Reps have found themselves um, actually facing a barrage of criticism for the bill, um, um, on the bill. Most who have done so um, have wondered why it is now, when we're in the midst, we're busy in the midst of um, battling coronavirus, trying to uh, contain it, that a bill like this is coming uh, up for, for discussion at all. Uh, then. The Senate has also brought its own version of the bill out. Uh, indeed, that has gone through a first reading. But over there, they took a slightly different approach, ever so slightly, um, to the extent that the former uh, Deputy uh, Senate President, uh, Ike Kudamadu, had you know, risen on an order and has said that he requires to see the actual written form of the bill being proposed because um, he didn't think that in the Senate they needed the kind of controversy that was going on uh, on, on the same, well, not so much the same, but you know, a very, very similar bill in the House of Representatives. Indeed, the, the uh, Senate President has ruled that, indeed, that should be made available to all the senators and that they will come back next week uh, to look at it. Now, um, we, we, we have a report, you know, by our uh, Joke Adisa that will sort of situate it. But long story short, I, I guess people are concerned that the reason why those who are raising the bills are raising it is because they know that if uh, without it, some measures that um, controlling of this disease might entail will infringe on, on constitutional rights of individuals. And so they need a law to back it up. Now, how they go about it is everything. And um, as I said, Joke Adisa has a, a report. Let's take uh, her report. She's reporting from the House of uh, Representatives. Last Tuesday, Speaker Femi Gbajabi Amila stepped down from his seat to present a bill seeking to repeal the Quarantine Act and enact the Infectious Diseases Control Bill. The first and second readings were taken almost immediately, but members kicked against the third reading. Since then, controversy has thrilled the bill, with many describing it as a hatchet job from the international community. Cop spokesman Ikenga Ugochiri in a video that went viral instigated opposition lawmakers against the leadership of the House, even as a former member of the Senate, Dino Milai, filed a case in court to challenge the Speaker on the bill. Now the House has decided to react, insisting the bill was conceived in the interest of the public. It has resolved to add to the courts. To pursue um, legal remedy. I think that will be will serve as a lesson um, to many others out there. Meanwhile, the Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19 wants the National Assembly to develop a legal framework that will get the country prepared for any future pandemic. The National Assembly develop a legislative framework for reforming and transforming our healthcare system, strengthen the legislative framework for economic growth it was also an opportunity for the lawmakers to seek clarification from the NCDC Director General regarding his comments that laws are not amended in the middle of a crisis. Is the current virus, the COVID-19, is it covered by the Quarantine Act? But I was answering to a specific question by the journalist at the time. Had I been consulted? The only honest answer to give at the time was that I hadn't been. 
because I hadn't been. At the end of the interface between the lawmakers and members of the Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19, which lasted for more than three hours, both parties resolved to work hand in hand to tame the coronavirus pandemic in the overall interest of the people. Jokia Adisa, TVC News, Abuja. Okay, um, thank you very much, Jokia, for that report. It went out earlier. And um, uh, we, we, we have a number of contributors to this conversation. Standing by is our friend Malaki Ugumadu. Uh, he's a lawyer and a human rights activist. Indeed, he's the former president of, um, a former president of the Commi uh, Committee for the Defense of Human Rights. Um, let me see if it's, if it's already there. Good morning, Mr. Ugumadu. Indeed, he's ready. Hi, Malaki. Uh, good morning, my Oga on the top, Yori. <laughs> Yori will do just fine. Thank you very much for coming on the program. I'm here alongside my colleague, Asukwa James. So how are you doing, sir? Good Ve morning. Very well, thank you. Now, give me your view on the uh, con controversy going on regarding the uh, Control of Infectious Diseases Act. It's now a two-pronged affair. But um, let's stay on the House of Reps um, end of the matter, where Speaker, uh, the, the, the Speaker, Femi Badiadia Mila, has said that um, we're too quick to re re relate to conspiracy theories. And he was at pains to um, assure us that there was nothing untoward about this whole bill. Your thoughts, please. Oh, well. Um, first of all, I'd like to commence this discussion within the time uh, allowed by commending Nigerians, uh, particularly the civil society community that has risen once again to the occasion. Um, within the circumstance that we find ourselves, which is the circumstance imposed or forced on us by the pandemic of uh, COVID-19, um, in a way that quickly appraised and otherwise, a very unsettling situation that would have um, uh, that would have had more challenging consequences if uh, the pressure, as it were, were, were not uh, mounted. So I, I commend the ever vibrant, ever vigilant uh, civil society community, which is precisely the price we we have to pay for the liberty that we have managed to to secure and rescue from the military, uh, including the fundamentals. I make this point because, in several sense, um, it is obvious that such a bill of such magnitude and, and, and impact could not effectively be passed into law without the inputs of those who will be affected by the law itself. And I'm talking of the Nigerian populace. Uh, uh, generally, if you talk of participatory democracy, anchored in representative democracy, which is well captured by the legislature, then you cannot be talking of a legislation in which the people did not participate uh, in the process. So public hearing is but an integral process embedded in the legislative uh, activities of any civilized nation to have not just the buy-in, but the ownership of the people with respect to any legislation made in their interest. And don't forget, they are members of the House of Representatives. So who, who are you representing if the stakeholders, the constituency, the citizenry, the beneficiaries, the victims of your proposed legislation are not part of your legislation? So to that extent, I would think that Bajabi and Miller had again shown not just maturity, but some measure of uh, sensitivity in quickly recognizing that there is hardly any way you can secure the legitimacy of the law you are making, except with the inputs of the people on whose behalf you are making it. This is not to challenge your powers under Section 4 of the Constitution. This is to consolidate and deepen the democratization process where the people are the fulcrum 
are the focus, are indeed the object of uh, any such uh, legislation. And I, and I think it is playing out uh, quite well. Uh, again, I must not cease to commend my, my colleagues in the civil society who have risen to the occasion in spite of the pandemic uh, distractions. Uh, uh, Mr. Malaki, do you think it's wrong at this time to have, you know, brought this kind of um, bill, especially when there were controversy over the Quarantine Act, which Mr. President actually used um, at this time the, the, uh, during this pandemic? That sounds like uh, my Ogda Ogda series. Is that serious voice? I can't no, see I, well, here, but, I introduced um, uh, Azuko support. James to you ah, at the top. Ah, Sorry, ah, you didn't hear it. Uh, yes, thank you. So. I go to your question, and it's to the timing. Let's even take it from two perspectives. You will recall, I'm sure you monitored the, the, the sitting of the House of Representatives yesterday when members of the PTF were invited. You could see that that aspect played out most prominently. When the speaker took uh, what you could call took offense, uh, against uh, the DG of uh, NCDC, uh, accusing him of uh, uh, insisting that the timing was wrong, and secondly, that he was not consulted. Look, even in war times, which is very likely what we have now, it is uh, not the best to make the rules and promulgate legislation in the middle of the situation you are trying to address. It is either well before, or prior, or at the eve, or after. Now, this will give Let me you jump in here, Malaki. I, I beg your pardon. Um, bearing in mind what you've just said, um, what, what do you now think that the Senate is also bringing a, high, a very similar bill? So it must mean that this line of reasoning of yours, for some reason or another is not right in the National Assembly. The Senate has introduced its own version of the bill. Uh, I, I, I beg your pardon, I could hardly hear this. I could, I was... Okay, know, I, I, very, very uh, let, let me go on a break. I'll be right back. Stay with us, please. We'll be right back. Okay, um... Welcome back, and um, we still have uh, Malaki Ugumadu, human rights activist and former president of uh, CDHR. Um, uh, okay, then, Malaki, you still with us? Yes, I can. Okay, um, le let me try my question one more time, after which I'll hand it over to Asuko in case he's luckier. Um, what you've just said, that uh, this is hardly the time, the right time, to be coming up with a bill like this, but the Senate has also joined the act by coming up with its own version of the bill. It's a highly similar bill. It looks like your line of thinking isn't rife in the National Assembly. Why do you think that is so? Again, the, it's, it's still a bit difficult for me to clearly hear you, but I imagine that you are talking about um, the uh, version of the bill in the Senate, which was uh, captioned uh, the Health Emergency Bill. For me, that uh, came across almost like a body walking across purposes, in the sense that um, even from the title of the bills, you are talking of slightly different uh, legislations, even if they were meant or purported to achieve the same end. Uh, and this is part of the challenge with this whole experience. It is namely that the timing was not proper, it is that it was a bit hasty. Thirdly, is that um, as it has turned out, uh, the the Senate is uh, uh, taking a step that suggests that they are most likely going to work at uh, cross purposes. One would have thought that what happened is that once a bill is introduced either at the lower chambers of the National Assembly or at the red, the Green Chamber there will be at a point where there will be the need for concurrence. In other words, the other chamber, not the chamber that introduced it, will have the opportunity to look at the same bill that it was initiated at the lower house for concurrence. Now, 
in this situation, what we are already seeing is that um, you have more or less complicated the issue. Part of the challenge is that uh, there is in existence certain laws, legislation. You have the, the National Health Act 2014. You have uh, the Quarantine Act, of course, a very obsolete and old one. But the most dangerous aspect of this legislation, which for all reasons has attracted the resentment of uh, the public, is that it was set on a collision course against the Constitution. And once there is such a collision and call, uh, course, um, that other law, that law, will at some point succumb to the superiority of the Constitution. That is the express uh, provision of the Constitution, Section 1, Section 3. Uh, uh, and that was the introductory, my own introductory statement in my own press uh, statement, that this act was set on a collision course against the express provisions of the 1999 Constitution. And I'm referencing our, our, uh, our, our collective rights to, 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 to liberty, to movement, to, to, to owning and acquiring property, which are specified under Section 43 and 44. Now, I understand and very much appreciate that, look, there is a sense in which uh, the initiators of this bill, particularly the speaker and his co-sponsor, believe that this is an emergency time that requires a speedy intervention. But in doing that, you don't create more problems that you intend to solve. Nigerians' rights, I'm talking of the fundamental rights entrenched under Chapter 4 of the Constitution, has not been foreclosed on account of the fact that there is COVID uh, pandemic in, in the world, no less in Nigeria. And therefore, if you're going to pass legislation in which you are going to completely remain impervious and insensitive to the rights of Nigerians that are already entrenched in a manner that you cannot take away except as otherwise permissible or permitted under Section 45, which is a section that allows you to derogate from some of these rights, you must be able to prove that you are derivating from this right by this legislation on the sole ground that they are uh, necessary within a democratic society and compatible with existing laws. So the question Alaki, is... One, one moment, please. Let me come in here. Um, I, I hope you can hear me. We haven't mentioned the word or, or put it in a sentence, but I think at the back of all of this is a question of enforced vaccination. A lot of people are reading into the situation on the ground, uh, a situation, uh, a, a time when we will be compelled by law to take certain vaccinations and most people are fearful of being used as guinea pigs and so they want to preserve their right to refuse any such enforced vaccination. And that's apart from other constitutional uh, freedoms such as you have uh, already expressed. What would be your thought on that? I'm quite hard to hear the pre COVID-19. The issues that have been implicated are clear. It is that this piece of legislation has come out in a very draconian fashion. It has, um, it has been, it is proposed in a manner that we ride rough shots on the basic principles that makes us a civilized nation. And what is, what is a democratic society, like I was trying to say? It is when you have the rule of law, it is when you have a, pre, a free press, it is when you have the independence of the judiciary, but more importantly, it is when you observe have the fundamental rights of the citizens of that society. So if, like we have seen, particularly the very, very, very powerful Section 15, 3E of the proposed uh, Stay with us. I've got to ask a question of another guest uh, who is on the phone. That's uh, Honorable Ikwola Omi Shore. He's a former member of the Lagos State House of Assembly and uh, is a public affairs uh, commentator. Good morning, Honorable Omi Shore. Good morning, uh, Yori Falani. How are you? Very well, thank you. Um, now, you, you know the controversy that's going on. Um, 
honorable, the, uh, the speaker has, you know, maybe in addressing some of the objections that have come up against um, his proposed uh, bill, um, you know, has said that, look, the whole matter of public debate and public contribution can be arranged by in some virtual form, which indeed they are going to explore, and that for the avoidance of doubt, there would be a public input. Now, bearing that in mind, in, a, in responding and commenting on that aspect of it, would you also take along the whole matter about perhaps the fear of the people that you can't force me to become a guinea pig. If I don't want a vaccination, I'm not going to take a vaccination. And so there is a suspicion that this is where all of this is leading to at the end of the day. Your comments, please. Uh, thank you very much. I think uh, you know, we're an independent nation. We have a constitution that is backing us. And uh, in that constitution, the National Assembly and the State Assembly make law. In this case, every law that is made at the National Assembly requires a uh, public hearing. Where the public will make view, their views known. But I know that, you know, all over the world, you prevent diseases. You prevent death. And one of the ways of preventing death and diseases is by uh, ensuring you, you know, you work ahead. And what the National Assembly is trying to do is that in view of the current problem we have, the crisis, the, uh, the virus issue, they want to think ahead. And I don't think anybody should put, put any clog in the wheel of progress. Because at the end of the day, if we can keep dying in masses, we keep, you know, losing lives, people will say, National Assembly, are you not there? What are you there? You are the masses of the people. What are you there? I think what we should do is to allow the bill to go into public hearing. The National Health Act, I am sure, is updated. Law making is a dynamic process. You don't stay with the law. The law of 1870, you cannot use the using it now. Okay, Honorable Omishore, Honorable Omishore, one second, please. One second, please. Honorable Omishore, one second, please. We've got a question from my colleague, Asukwa James. Okay. So, Honorable, are you saying that you are game, you are okay with how the, the, the bill is? Because there are some clauses in the bill that says that even, they can even, if the minister wants your house or your property, they can easily come and say, okay, we want to use your property for isolation center. Because there are so many controversies around the, the bill. Are, are you saying it, you are okay with the bill like that, apart from even the fact that it was, if not because people actually, um, a, you know, that's, say that's that this problem. bill was, was faulty, they, they, I'm, I'm very sure it wouldn't have even gone for public hearing. Certainly, I'm, 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 certainly I'm not okay. Certainly I'm Certainly, I'm not okay, but the essence of public hearing is to minus and pluses on all issues in the law. Why do you want to you know, block the law? Let's go to public hearing, all the proponents and those who are against. Let them go on the floor. We listen to them. That's the beauty of lawmaking. In lawmaking, public hearing affords those who, are, who have, in, in fact, the law as it's coming is, is raw. It's not yet a law. That bill is not yet a law until all of us agree. You cannot come to my house and say my house is taken or anything because of uh, health issues. But at the same time, let us do it. We cannot be looking at the National uh, Health Act that it did not plan for this uh, sort of crisis. Who knows what is coming ahead? I think the National Assembly should be praised for being very proactive. Whether the timing is right or wrong is another thing. Honorable Omishore, um, Honorable Omishore, yes, as, as we, we're talking right now about uh, Femi Badiabia Amelia's bill, and yeah. then we hear that um, the upper house, if that is what you should call it properly, we're talking about the Senate, that the Senate also has its own version of the bill. Um, uh, it has been observed already that ordinarily what happens is that when a bill, where, wherever it originates from, it will come to a stage where there will be a committee of the whole house. And uh, now that both of them uh, have similar bills, uh, is the National <laughs> Assembly not working yeah, at cross purposes? Yeah, I think it's, uh, I think it's uh, you know, legislative rascality. Yeah, I think it's legislative rascality. They do not really need to you know, work against each other. Uh, what I've started the upper chambers to do was to allow 
the, the, the National Assembly, the House of Rest, to conclude. And they look at areas of amalgamation rather than, you know, I think they are not busy. If they are busy, they should be doing something else at the Senate. Okay. Uh, and then there is the whole, the, the other question. Asuko has pointed out one or two things, uh, like, you know, commandeering assets, you know, as, as indeed happens in a wartime, you know, situation. But this is not like that at all. Um, I, I wonder what you think about Nigeria's fear that somewhere down the line, if this bill flies, you're going to be able to force me to take a vaccination that I want to decline. Say, look, I'll take my luck. I don't want to be vaccinated. It might well be, some people are fearing, that by law, you must take a vaccination. And so there's this whole matter, and as you know, there is no is vaccination. It, is it, there is none. So any vaccination it, now would be an experiment. And not everybody it, wants it, to join in the it, experiment. It, 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 it. Yori, Yori. Yeah, go on, go on sir. Go on, sir. A good leader is one that leads his people to where they should be, not necessarily where they want to go. You see, years ago, measles were injected uh, to be vaccinated as people in, in the north. You know, even even uh, meningitis, they, re they resisted. But today, after 20 years or 30 years, they now see reason why they should have it because people are dying every mass in the north. So then now they had accept measles. In those days, in India, the, the, the Islamic scholars, we say, don't allow your children to be. I think what we should do is that we are a nation. We are moving. We are one of the fastest developing nations. We should not just sit oh, uh, in the past. For me, uh, you cannot force me to take immunization. But at the same time, when you make it clear to me, I will agree. Okay, what Honorable, I've got to take a break now. Me, for me, I'm coming to the National Assembly to tackle the bill as an individual. All the right, then. Thank you very much, Honorable Ifwala Omishore, for joining us on the program this morning. Really appreciate your time, sir. Okay, stay with us, please. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, welcome back. And uh, we're looking at um, uh, a bill, uh, something about the, the control of infectious diseases uh, bill uh, that um, has been introduced in the House of Representatives by the Speaker. A similar one has also emerged from the Senate. But we go back to, um, so to speak, the House of Representatives because we have um, Honorable Benjamin uh, Kano, uh, who is a spokesperson in the House of Representatives. Um, actually, he, we're not ready for him yet, uh, I understand. Okay, that's, but that's what we intend to do. Mm -hmm. We wanted to go that. Um, so in the meantime, we'll try um, uh, Malaki again uh, to see if... Uh, Malaki, you still with us? Yes, I, I could hear your guest much better than you do. I could hear the, uh, the <laughs> house member much better than you, but okay. I, I'll manage. That's good. Um, uh, okay, uh, go, go ahead, Azuka. I want to try your mic with him. <laughs> Can you hear me? <laughs> Very differently, but I, I would manage to catch the main meat of it. Okay, but it, it, there's another issue where that, that Nigerians are concerned about the speed of how the bill, you know, was actually read and uh, in on the floor of the house. You know, they, do you think that is where people we are actually being suspicious about it? About the whole bill and the absence of uh, and the, the absence of you know public public hearing and um, and even um, but, dissenting but, voices. Yes, you know? but he has said that they're going to do this by Zoom or whatever. Well, I, I think that is part of it. You know, the, it was an inordinate speed. Uh, like I said, I imagine uh, that uh, uh, they have been driven, particularly the speaker who has shown. Uh, some desire to respond to the people's needs. Don't forget, it was uh, not this singular bill alone that was brought to the floor of the House. Uh, you recall that he was also the one who moved uh, the motion to regulate the electricity uh, tax on the people at the moment in view of this situation and so on and so forth. So we, we recognize that. And i like to appeal to uh, the House member whom you just spoke with to say that, look, um, well, it's fair enough to. Well, have he's, a, this he's, he's, a, you know, he's a former member uh, of this, uh, uh, the Lagos State House of Assembly. 
Yes, yes Lagos State House of Assembly. Former member. Uh -huh. It's good to have this this comradium sort of uh, disposition. But look, when the when the when the when the facts fly in the face of logic and establish truth, then you must uh, reverse your steps. Otherwise, you will be acting for yourself and not in representation of the people. Uh, now, even when he made the point that this is just a bill, please let him take time to read this proposed bill and see that there was a repeated use of the word act, 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 as if it is already passed into law. Now, that is the problem, that's the problem of cut and paste, and we have, we have all traced this into the Singaporean, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, act that was, you know, uh, passed around 1977, when uh, Lin Kuan Yu was uh, in full charge of that country under a, a kind of dictatorial uh, rule. Now, if you apply that hook, line, and sinker in the Nigerian situation, you will run foul of all we are complaining about today. I think the point is simple. It is that even from the Senate, there's already a court case from one of the senators. I'm talking of Dino Malai. Now, how far he will go with that is a different kettle of fish because uh, I'm not sure whether the court will be able to rise to stop the Dino process. Dino Malai is a former senator. That ought to be you know, done at the end of it. But the point is that that is to show you the and level of discordance. discordance. The, 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 the fact that there's no unanimity of purpose. Yeah, and but 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 Senator Dino Melaye is a former senator and a former member theory. of the House of Representatives. It's a as far as I'm concerned. Whereas that could be true, but if it is a bill that has such profound impact on the citizens you are trying to legislate on, then you cannot but have their impute. It is this impute that guarantees the participatory represent, uh, democracy that we're talking about. It is this impute that legitimizes representation itself. Indeed, the essence of that is to, able, is to be able to leverage on the expertise of those who are supposed to know. For instance, what does it cost the House of Representatives in having this, uh, this draft bill as quickly as possible and send it to NCDC, for instance, to say, please, you are on the front line, want to leverage or assess the experiences you have gathered along the line. We want to also be able to have your input, however minimal, and then reach out to the Association of Medical Doctors and indeed some foreign partners, if okay. you like, uh, that, me, me. that may have major experiences in this line. So that when you... Okay, Malaki, uh, let, 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 let me put this idea... Uh, to uh, Benjamin uh, Kalu, Honorable Kalu is a, a ha the House of Representatives uh, is, is a House of Representatives spokesperson, and he's coming to us from uh, Abuja Studios. Uh, good morning, Honorable Kalu. Good morning, sir. Very well. And, uh, uh, Nigerians, thank you for tuning in. Indeed, thank you very much for coming on. My name is Yori Falaring, alongside my colleague here. Um, Asukwa uh, James. Money. Now, people have criticized the activities Good proceedings. Morning, you, you've no doubt heard of criticisms of the processes regarding the um, control of the infectious diseases bill uh, that is currently going through the House of Representatives. Uh, the haste, what, what, what would be your comment that there seems to be an unseemly haste, and um, it's almost like an afterthought that the speaker, the sponsor of the bill, is now saying that, okay, we can find a virtual way to get Nigeria's input. And then react, if you will, sir, to the, the point that this is hardly the time for this kind of a legislative effort. I can hardly hear him. I can't hear him. I can't hear him. Okay. Um, um, hello. Can you hear me now? I've started hearing you. I wasn't hearing you before. You've started hearing me now. Beautiful. Um, <coughs> let me try again. What would be your response to the thought that, one, this is an inappropriate time 
to beginning, to be beginning such a legislative uh, matter. And that's apart from the dangers of not getting public input into uh, the bill. Let me just limit it there. If, did you hear that? Yes, yes. Thank, thank you very much. And I want to thank your station, as well as all the television channels, for making effort to enlighten Nigerians about the activities of the National Assembly. This is quite commendable because Nigerians need to be in the know of what is happening uh, here in Abuja. Yes, um, there have been a lot of controversies around this bill. The question is, um, is the bill well intended? The answer is yes. Is the bill needed at the moment? The answer is yes. Are there gaps in the previous, uh, in the current uh, act, the Quarantine Act? The answer is yes. Did the National Assembly just start uh, looking at the uh, act now? The answer is no. It was in the Eighth Assembly that they started looking at the Quarantine Act. It was in the Eighth Assembly that they noticed the gaps in the Quarantine Act. And this is prior COVID. So it wasn't like, um, uh, you know, it was because of COVID that they started running up and down. But COVID has exposed a lot of weaknesses of that particular act and uh, calls for us as the People's Parliament to take step to bridge this gap. The question as to whether the timing is proper, uh, the answer is yes. Because just like the, we engaged the director of the NCDC yesterday, and um, the question we asked him was, you, you said to Nigerians that making a bill, making a law in the middle of crisis is not advisable. He said yes. We asked him why. Is he a duty to tell lawmakers when to make laws for the Federation? You are the executive, we are the legislative arm. Our duty is to represent our people. Finally, there are problems in how services are rendered to them. If there, is there anything that is um, inhibiting uh, efficiency and if, you know, of these agencies in serving, serving our people? If the answer is yes, does it have to do with the legal framework? If the answer is yes, what can we do through legislative intervention to make sure that that legal framework is strengthened? That is our job. And it's, it's a constitutional mandate. Now, so the timing is determined by us. We are representing the people. Okay? Now, on the issue of um, how uh, the uh, bill uh, giving an emergency uh, element, uh, Honorable Carlo. the urgency Honorable element, Carlo. whether it is proper or not, whether the people are supposed to be involved or not, the answer is that I have said it in various uh, interaction, uh, you know, uh, platforms that the bill, when it appears before the House, has a particular sequence it must go through. And that is what I refer to as the, nine, uh, the full nine yards of making a bill become an act. You know, we are in an emergency situation where we meet only once uh, in a week, and that could be taken for granted why the rules and business uh, publish uh, first reading, which is mentioning the title of the bill, and the second reading, which is um, explaining the general principle of the bill, on the first day. But whether or not that bill was going to be read the third time, you know, in the wisdom of the leadership, they said, no, let's take it home since members complain they don't have access to this bill. Let them read it and then consult with their constituents and come back to the House to have more um, uh, facts to add to the bill. And you know. Bills are just compilation of ideas that is presented to the legislature for them to prune it, for them to be able to adjust it to meet the needs that is supposed to meet for the people. And the information out there sounded like the bill has been passed. The bill has not been passed. The bill just went through the first two steps of um, uh, the process. 
The other step will be going to the committee, relevant committee. And this is what the Speaker of the House, who is one of the co-sponsors, listening to the yearning of the House members as well as the yearning of the public. And uh, the House is a democratic uh, uh, structure. It, it's, it's, it's not a military rule. It's not a military regime. We are bound to listen to the people. And they said, we want to make our input. We said, yes. Instead of the emergency element due to the um, uh, problem caused by COVID, we want to, wanted to pass it early. Let us allow the input of the public. Let us get, because they are the boss, we are their servants. Let us get, you know, fill their pauses, get their input, the professionals, the civil society organization, the, um, um, the traditional rulers, the uh, faith-based organization, and all the rest of them. So they should get ready to come for uh, public hearing where these things will be uh, uh, discussed and every input will be harvested to make a better law that will serve Nigerians. So let's go outside the controversies and the conspiracies and focus on the intention of the bill. It is only there to bridge the gap so that Nigerians will be served better. The gaps are there. Uh, Honorable Carlo. The list of um, Carlo. diseases that is uh, listed by quarantine are Honorable Carlo. You will see typhoid fever. You will see, um, 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 what is it called? Um, 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 you will see smallpox. You will not see things like tuberculosis. You will not see things like um, um, uh, the COVID. And all that. You will not even see Lassa fever. So it's limited. So it needs to be widened so that it will accommodate because people are agitating now that the PTF and the agency, they are acting under um, uh, a law that is non-existent, that did not recognize COVID, that they need a, a, a legislative framework that will help them function properly. And the SGF, he met us yesterday, the chairman of the PTF, mentioned it that this is one of the things they need from the National Assembly, that the legislative um, that the legal framework should be strengthened to enable them to serve Nigerians better. And Honor somehow, the DG of NCDC Honor. finally agreed with us that the time is now for us to be able to look into this you know, to make sure we strengthen the legislative framework for Nigerians to be served better. So that is just, and it must be pushed out there that the Nigerians are the ones we are representing. We are not representing ourselves. We are representing Nigerians. And if they say uh, no, uh, Honorable this, Carlo, stop at the point they said no. If they say Honorable yes, Carlo, and there is nobody that is going to influence us outside the citizens of Nigeria. Okay, Honorable Carlo, thank you very much. Can you hear us? Um, we guess that, well, there's a sense in which um, Honorable Carlo had a field day um, because we couldn't get uh, any question in. Uh, the the yeah, communication I, was yeah. such that um, we just didn't want to risk tampering yeah. with the clarity of his uh, uh, contribution. So we, we had that challenge. But he, he raised some matters. So um, we, we're going to continue from studio, and we want to thank very much uh, Honorable Benjamin Carlo. House of Reps spokesman for, you know, joining us from our Abuja studio. So at least we heard his whole mm -hmm. presentation. And um, we've also heard from uh, Mr. Malaki Ugumadu. And we've also, and we've also heard from Honorable Ikola Omifiore. Uh, they are still there. Now, some, some of the points that, um, that Honorable uh, Kalu brought up, uh, I, I really wanted, I, 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 I really wish I could have, um, um, I'm, I'm hearing that somebody, well, I, I believe, okay, Honorable Kalu seems to be able to hear me now. Okay. Uh, b because what I wanted to bring up when Honorable Kalu was speaking was, I, I wonder why um, you didn't consult, that is, not you individually, but w those that were putting together the House of Reps uh, bill, or uh, this bill, why they didn't consult with the experts, uh, namely those in um, uh, the um, CD, mm. uh, NCDC. The, the NCDC, for instance, mm -hmm. instead of this whole brick brat that now came about and the man was explaining to us that he had to tell the truth. He was not consulted when any of this work was being done. Um, so I, I wonder, uh, that is where people began to wonder how thorough a job was being put together. If the experts were not consulted, you get their inputs. You know what the resistance is, if any, was going to be. And, um, you know, that kind of a thing. How would you respond, Honorable? Yes. Uh, thank, you very, thank you very much. Again, like I've always said, there are, 
there are stages in the process of making a bill become an act. When it is drafted and presented for first hearing and second hearing, that is not the time you go scouting for the input of the public. The no, no, no. Experts. 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 Not, not public. Experts. The input of experts. The stakeholders to be gotten. It's oh. at this stage where the committee, through their consultant, will call in this expert okay. or open up a public hearing. A public hearing. At the point of public hearing, input from various stakeholders will be harvested. And um, it will come back to the House after a report on the public hearing is done. It will come back to the House for what we call the clause-by-clause -clause consideration. We have not even gotten to that level. It's after we must have gotten the input of the House, we have gotten the input of the public, we will now come back to the House to present it. And members will say yes to this clause or no to the other clause. So it, it's still a long process. So when the alarm was raised, we were like, uh, what is the alarm for? Why are we raising the alarm? Knowing fully well that the process only just commenced. So Nigerians were too much in a hurry to start fighting, and I know it was sponsored by maybe the opposition or, you know, it, it was uncalled for. It was uncalled for because the whole night, my first interview on this bill, which was 24, within 24 hours after the House considered, look at that bill, was that Nigerians should be patient because the whole nine years for making a bill become an act w w w w was going to be followed. And what, what do you think, Honorable Kalu? There is Honorable an Honorable Kalu. input. Honorable along Kalu. the line. So Honor the experts have a point to come in. Honorable Kalu, uh, yes. as you know, the Senate has also begun work on a very similar bill. Uh, people are saying, is the National Assembly working at cross purposes? No, not at all. Not, not at all. The National Assembly, they are not working at cross purposes. Hey. Hon Again, honorable, there are honorable. ways uh, bills move in the National Assembly. Like I said, after the third reading, we will present it to the Senate for what is called a concurrence. Now, if the Senate has uh, uh, something like that that is existing, all they will do now is to form a joint committee to consider similar bills to make sure we speak with one voice. There is nothing wrong if what was taught by House of Rep is also being taught at the same time by a member of the Senate. There is always a time to converge where a joint committee will be uh, set up to look at uh, two of them and merge them into, a one, to, into one document. Because if the Senate pass their bill and we don't concur with the bill, it will not fly to the, to the presidency. And the same thing is applicable to us because it's a bicameral system of uh, parliament that we are running. All right. I, I, want to, I want to thank you at this bill, point, Honorable Carlo. No I can't thank you enough for taking time Senate. out to it talk will, to us. Not, we really appreciate your joining us so from our Abuja studio. House, thank you very much, Honorable Benjamin Carlo, spokesperson of the House of Representatives. So, that's, well, you know, indeed, uh, um, we appreciate our Honorable Carlo coming on and helping us out there. Uh, we still have um, Malaki Ugumadu. Um, he's still on the um, Skype line. Um, Malaki, you, you must have heard all of that. Your concluding thoughts, please, very briefly on, um, you know, the conversation we're having. Very briefly, please. Take that again, sir. <laughs> your brief, your closing remarks. Oh, okay, very well. Yeah, um, well, I, I think uh, we do not need to belabor the trivial issues. We need to focus on the hard issues that has arisen from this whole uh, experience. Um, uh, the honorable member, the spokesperson, as I understand it, uh, should do very little in trying to discountenance the very difficult aspect of this bill that I already identified. The point is that, look, 
there are so many sections in this bill, which is already referred to as an act. act. Uh, that, uh, that, that was a mistake. That was clearly a mistake. Fundamental rights of Nigeria. All right. That, well, thank you very much, uh, Malaki. I, I really wanted to thank you very uh, much for taking the time out to join us. And we really yeah, appreciate your contribution. Thank you very much, as always, for you know coming on, um, Malaki Ugumadi. Ah, well, we, we, we've heard from quite a number of people. Mm -hmm. In fact, the only everybody is working for the people. The National Assembly is working for the people. We, we too here. We're we are working, working for, the, for people. the people. But our people, the, the callers, didn't get a chance to, exactly. to, to call in. So maybe we'll be able to rectify that in a subsequent mm -hmm. program. Mm -hmm. uh, please be understanding. But we just thought we needed to touch on. Uh, get get the input of these key people uh, so that we'd have a more meaningful uh, conversation. Well, that's our program. We wait and see how it goes. Mm -hmm. uh, he explained, he sort of tried to clear that up about uh, maybe working at cost purposes. Mm -hmm. that, no, either way, either from the House to the Senate or from the Senate to the House, there must be concurrence. And uh, we'll see how all of this goes. But the one thing that remains, I think, is the, the way the people think of it as a controversial bill. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm, it's, it's still controversial because just like you said, they need the civil society groups to go there. So people like Malaki has to be there yes. to make sure that then the world experts, acts is removed. Medical experts. A medical expert. No, they, uh, NCDC, all. Yes. Everybody has to be there. Mm -hmm. No, but, that act you know, was clearly a typo. Yes. And Malaki referred to it as a cut and paste approach. Exactly. You know, that because, is what everybody is saying. Yes, and, that, that if it know, were not, why would the word act remain in a mm -hmm. bill? As if Maybe there's an explanation that we law. don't know anything about because if it's as high up as uh, coming from Honorable Bajabi Amila, um, uh, you know, that was a particularly, you know, poor one, you know, mm -hmm. the word act being in a bill. Uh, so, the, 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 be that as it may. I, I guess we'll have to leave it here for yes, now. Yes, exactly. You know, uh, and see uh, how it develops, and then we'll come back to it. So, our uh, thanks go once again to the um, uh, Benjamin Kalu, uh, our, uh, uh, spokesperson, Dr. for joining us. Um, indeed, to Malaki Ugumadu as well, to Honorable Ipola Omishuri. And indeed, um, you know, our reporter, you know, for setting the scene for us mm -hmm. uh, at the top. Mm -hmm. okay. So on behalf of Asuko James, this is Yori Polaren saying thank you very much for being with us and join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. Bye-bye for now.